Hello friends and welcome back to Stay Tonight. If you are a beginner who is learning web development and the properties of inline, inline block, and block confuses you when you are learning CSS. You don't know when to use these property. You don't know what inline means, what block means, and what is the difference between inline and inline block. And when you create a web page, you are always confused which property to use. Then this video is for you. I've already created a video explaining what are inline tags and block tags in HTML. So you should check that video out first before watching this video. So in this video, we'll talk about what are the differences between inline block and inline hyphen block property and where to use which one and what do they mean. So let's get started. So in CSS, we have a display property. Uh, which can take uh, any value inline block inline block and there's a special value none as well now this none value is used if you want to hide a particular html element completely so let's not talk about this right now we will come back to this at the end so we'll start with understanding what inline block and inline hyphen block means now like i said you know go watch the video for html tags for inline and block and a block tag in html is a tag which takes up the entire width Whereas an inline tag is a tag which takes enough width which is required just by the content inside it. For example, span is a inline tag. Div is a block tag. Let me show you one example quickly. So here, you know, we have uh, this uh, divisions and span tags created. So if I give color to my, you know, the normal div, let me add a background color to it. Then you will be able to visualize how a block level tag looks. So this is how a block level tag looks. It will take up the entire width that is available in the parent. Whereas a span or an inline tag, so it looks like, uh, if I give it a pink color. So this is how a span tags looks like. A span tag will take just the width that is required by the content inside it. So as you can see, one span tag ends here, one ends here. Whereas the div tag, it takes up the entire width and it has pushed other tags below it. So another div tag is here. It will also take the same uh, entire width because it is also a block tag and span are inline tags. So that's the normal behavior of an inline tag and a block tag. Now CSS provides us with property display using which you can control the inline and block tag. I can make a span tag behave as a block tag or I can make a div tag behave like an inline tag. So just to talk about what these properties mean, the block property will make any HTML tag behave as a block tag and it will start taking up the entire width, right? And inline property, so the property would be display inline, right? This property will make any tag behave as an inline tag. So that means it will allow other tags to uh, be placed adjacent to it in a web page. So another point is that an inline tag has no effect of width and height properties. So you know that in, in CSS we have width and height property to control the width and height of any HTML tag. So I can provide height and width CSS properties and make a you know HTML tag take up whatever height I want to take it to and whatever width I want it to take. But in case of an inline tag, this height and width property, even if you provide height and width CSS property, it won't have any effect, right? So for example, if a span tag is this, and it has some text, uh, let's say, I mean, shake in it. So this is the actual box of a span tag. Uh, let's say it is uh, 15 pixels and the width is, let's say, 30 pixels. Now, if I want to change the height and width and I use the width and height properties, I, it won't have any effect on this. It will just stay the same. So that's the natural behavior of an inline tag. Now, if you have a block tag, on the other hand, which is taking by default the entire width, and if you want it to behave as an inline tag, then you can use the display inline property. So I'll show it to you guys when doing the code example. If I apply this property on a div tag, it starts behaving like an inline tag. Now, like I said, an inline tag doesn't have uh, any respect for width or height that you provide. It will take only that much width and height that is required by the content inside it. Now, if you want an inline tag to, you know, start accepting the width and height properties, then you can use the inline block property. Now, inline block property is just like inline, but it respects the width and height given to it. So for example, this span, uh, like I said, you know, it has 15 pixel height and 30 pixel width. Now, if I use the inline block property with it, it will start taking width and height, whatever I provide to it. So that's the difference. So inline is just normal inline tag. Block is a normal block tag. 
An inline block is a special property where I can make an inline tag accept width and height and still behave as an inline tag. So this is a great uh, you know way to uh, optimize your inline tags, optimize your inline uh, elements and you know start make them uh, whatever width and height you want to give them to. So uh, none like I said you know we'll come back to it later. Display none is a property that you can use to remove a particular HTML element absolutely you know from the entire uh, web page so it will not take any space even and it will just be not visible. Now similarly there's another property visibility which is also considered as a display property. It can take value hidden and visible. So if you make visibility hidden, uh, the HTML tag on which you apply this property, it will be become invisible, but it will, it will still take space. So for example, this is a block tag. If you uh, mark it display none, then it will be completely removed from the HTML web page. And this tag will directly come over this tag. There won't be anything here. Now, whereas if you apply visibility hidden on this tag, then the space occupied by this tag will still be there, but it will be white. This tag will be uh, invisible. So there will be this tag, then empty space, and then inline tag. So that's how visibility hidden works. Now let's see, you know, some code examples and, you know, let's try to visualize and use all these properties to uh, help you understand even better. So like you can see, you know, we have already created a div tag here, uh, another div tag with class stylish. And I have two span tags, I've added background color to one of the div tag to show you guys that, okay, this is a uh, block level tag. Now let me add some padding to it. And let's change the color to red is too harsh color. So this is how it looks, let's change the color of the text. So this is a div tag, right? And this is a span tag. Let's add some padding to this too. Now, by default, like you already know, a span tag is an inline tag, right? So if I try to provide any width, let's say 100 pixels, and any height to this, it won't take this and it will stay the same size. So this is a, a normal span tag, two span tags with background pink but they're not taking the property width and height. Okay, I provided the wrong value. But now also it's not taking width and height. Now what I can do is, uh, there are two things that I can do. Let's, you know, first use the display inline property and make this dev tag behave as an inline tag. So as soon as I add display inline here and I run it, you'll see that, you know, the div tag is no longer taking the entire width. It's behaving like a inline tag, right? now. You are seeing this particular div tag below because this div tag is still acting as a block tag. So what I can do is if I, so this is the stylish one. If what if I do, add the same style to this one as well. So the next div is the stylish div as you can see. So if I apply display inline to it as well, now everything is inline. Span tags are naturally inline and both the div tags I have made inline using the CSS property. So all of them start appearing. Uh, you know, as adjacent to each other in the same line. Now let's just remove this, uh, you know, it will automatically go to block. And let's remove this entire div tag also and make this stylish class and yeah, use it here. So this is, so I made all of them inline, span is by default inline. Now let me just, you know, use display block with the span tag. Now this will change the behavior of the span tag and they'll start behaving as a block level tag. Now, both of them are taking their in different spaces. And they're also, you know, now addressing the width and height property. Uh, you know, the width, for example, if I change it to 200, you'll see that the width is getting changed. So once we use display block property on inline elements, then they start behaving as a block element. And they also, uh, you know, take in the width and height properties. Now, on the other hand, if I apply an inline block to it, now it is behaving as an inline tag, but it is still accepting the width and height property. So if I change the height and width, so this is working, right? You know that, you know, when we used five width and height properties with a normal span tag, which is an inline tag, width and height properties were not making any change. Whereas now that we have, you know, used the display inline block property, we can see that height and the width property are being, uh, you know, showcased here, are being used here, and it is affecting the 
size of our span tag. Now, similarly, if I use the display none property, which I explained that, okay, display none removes. So the, both the span tags are completely removed, right? If I change it to log and if I run it, now it is here. Now, like I said, you know, if I apply it here, display none. So this div tag also disappears, span one, span two is still there. On the other hand, if I use the visibility property, we see if we T, and if I say hidden. Now this property makes a particular HTML element invisible, but it will still take up the space that is required. So the div tag was here, so it is still taking up the space, right? If I do it visible, so here is the uh, div tag. If I do hidden, then the div tag disappears, it is becoming invisible, but it is still taking up the space. So that's how the display properties in CSS work. The display properties are display inline, display block, display inline hyphen block, and display none to completely remove the HTML element from the web page. Then there is a visibility property which can take up two values, visibility hidden and visible, to make a particular HTML element invisible or visible in the document object model or in the web page. So that was about it uh, regarding this CSS property. I hope you were able to understand checking the examples and you know whatever I explained. I hope it will help you in creating your web pages and using these properties when you create your next web development project or you use it in your jobs. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up if you want me to create more such exciting videos around web development where I talk about HTML elements and I talk about you know cool CSS properties and different projects around this. Then you know like this video as much as you can. Share your suggestions in the comment section. And we have a CSS course available on our website. The CSS course covers almost every CSS property, starting from the basic ones, selectors, and you know how the box model work, the different display properties, positioning properties, color, font size, etc., shadows, and moving on to flex and grid. So if you really want to learn CSS, I think you should check out our CSS course. It is an interactive course, so you learn and you write code side by side. So that's it in this video. Thank you so much for watching the video till the end. See you in the next one.